After my initial 30, 50, 6 gigabyte review, many of you said, Artyom, it's all great that you compared it to the original 30, 50 and 30, 60, but these are not the graphics cards it's going to compete against. The real competition is what is being sold for the same price in the store right now, which is AMD 6500 XT, GTX 1650, and ARC GPUs, and I agree, but I didn't have those GPUs on hand when I was doing the original review, but I do have them now, so let's compare the new 6GB version with RX 6500 XT, that is like the most requested graphics card for comparison, the original 3050 8GB, and GTX 1650 GDDR5 version, which is a little slower than the GDDR6 version, but the difference is like 5%, so don't worry, it wouldn't make much difference in the tests. So let's see how these graphics cards are doing against 3056 gig. As I already said, the main goal is to compare it against RX 6500 XT. They should be very similar graphics cards in terms of performance, but who would win is a big question. The bench is gonna be the same as the original video, 14700KF, with E-Cores being disabled because they mess up some games, and two sticks of DDR5 7000MHz memory. So no CPU bottlenecks for us. Assassin's Creed Mirage, and I was pronouncing it incorrectly in the last video, and I have to live with that for the rest of my life. In this game, RX 6500 is doing very comparable to the new 3056GB, but the new 3050 is doing much better in terms of 1% low performance. The average FPS is basically the same, but 1% lows is important for smooth gameplay, so in this game the new 3050 definitely wins. It is 12% faster than the 6500 XT in terms of 1% lows. The 1650 is like 50% slower than the new 3050, so it's not even comparable to the new GPU. Next to Cyberpunk, the settings are also medium. In this title, the new 3056GB is 10% faster than the 6500 XT. Unfortunately, both cards struggle to deliver 60fps smooth performance, but still 3050 is a little better. The 1650 struggles to deliver even 30fps performance, so it's really out of the league of these two cards. And the original 8GB 3050 is, as always, at least 25% faster, but we already know that from the original video, so I'm not gonna comment on that in every scenario. But it's still gonna be here in case you haven't seen the original review. Next is Far Cry 6, settings are high, and in this game the new 3050 and 6500 XT show very similar performance. The new 3050 is only a little bit better in 1% lows, but performance is basically identical. But if you look at the VRAM usage, you can see that the 6GB of VRAM really helped this graphics card. And you could really turn up the settings even a little bit more and have the extra VRAM to use. Well, the 6500 XT doesn't have any extra VRAM to spare for increase in graphics settings. And 1650 is just, it's just not great in this game. The performance difference is like 70%, so don't get a GTX 1650 in the store. Only get it on used market for cheap. Next is Baldur's Gate 3 medium settings. And in this title, both cards have very similar FPS. I wouldn't call anyone a winner, but here's the problem. This game doesn't like 6500 XT. There are many problems with FPS, with sudden FPS drops, really weird 1% lows, etc. etc. Kinda plays good, and then at a certain moment it just starts to behave weirdly. You may say that 4 gigs of VRAM is not enough, but 1650 also has 4 gigs and its performance is very consistent, though very low of course, but 6500 XT just well, sometimes behaves really weirdly. So in this game I'm giving 3050 a win. Next is Counter-Strike 2 and it received a big patch between the tests of the original video and these tests, so FPS is a little different now. The new 3050 is 10% better than the 6500 XT, though both cards provide excellent gameplay experience in Counter-Strike 2. But still, a win is a win for the new 3056 GB. 1650 also shows quite a decent performance and is only 30% slower than the 6500 XT. Next is Hogwarts Legacy. And this game does like 6500 XT a little more than the new 3056 gig. Yes, the FPS advantage is very minor, but still, a win is a win. 
But looking at the VRAM usage, we can see that the new 3050 utilizes the extra 2GB of VRAM it has compared to the 6500 XT. So there is potential to even maybe crank up the settings a little bit more, especially if you turn on DLSS, which we will discuss just a little bit later. So you can definitely enjoy this game at medium settings on any of these two cards, but not on the 1650. You'll have to probably drop to low settings. Next is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, built-in benchmark, and here 6500 XT wins again, though yes, it's only a minor 10% difference, nevertheless the win is still a win, but look at the VRAM usage of both of these cards and see that there's like an 800 megabyte VRAM usage difference. I wonder why this is happening. I've double checked, the settings are absolutely identical, so I guess it maybe Nvidia handles VRAM differently. Now let's compare 6500 XT FSR against 3056 GB DLSS performance. Both are obviously set to quality because I do not accept anything else. And with upscaling enabled, AMD is better in average FPS, but Nvidia is better at 1% lows. We can argue what is more important, but for me it's 1% lows because they are showing the consistency of the frame rate. Yes, obviously both of these cards are way above 60 FPS and will allow you to have a smooth 60 plus FPS gameplay, but I still consider 3056 Giga winner in this one because 1% lows is more important. And 0-1% lows sometimes are a little worse in AMD. In Cyberpunk with Enable FSR Deal Assist, the 3050 is a clear winner. It now allows you to have a 60 plus FPS smooth gameplay experience with 80 FPS average. 6500 XT isn't even allowing you to have consistent 60 FPS. You can probably even get better visual settings for the 3050 and still get 60 FPS performance. And the extra 2GB of VRAM would definitely help with that. So, 3050 is 20% faster in average FPS and more than 30% faster in 1% lows. Cyberpunk just loves Team Green, I guess. In Baldur's Gate 3, when enabling FSR, 6500 XT has problems. If 3056GB with DLSS allows for, well, almost consistent 60 plus FPS performance, 6500 XT with FSR enabled, well, there's a lot of visual artifacts, these black squares all over the screen. There are very weird FPS drops, almost no consistency in FPS, no increase in FPS. For whatever reason, FSR with this graphics card in particular is just, well, it's basically not working. So a clear win for the new 3050. Maybe it's a game bug or a driver issue, it's really hard to say. But I haven't seen these problems with more expensive AMD GPUs. Hogwarts Legacy with FSR and DLSS shows, well, basically very similar performance. But in this case, maybe Nvidia now has the edge with, well, tiny bit better average FPS. But still, I would call this game a tie for both graphics cards. We do see the extra 2GB of VRAM being used in this game by the 3050. So if I had a 3050, I could probably crank up the settings a little higher and still would be able to have a smooth gameplay experience. While on AMD, I would probably run into the VRAM limitation. But in terms of FPS, the cards are basically the same. So, what's the conclusion? The 6500 XT is basically a very similar card to this one. And if these graphics cards are gonna be priced the same, 3050 is the obvious choice. Though the performance is very similar, it has two extra gigabytes of VRAM, it has all those AI features like DLSS, and it requires no extra power. It runs completely off the PCI Express slot. It means you can put them in some, you know, Dell or HP OEM computers that you can buy for very cheap. Because right now the best thing you can put in there is like 1650. So this new 3050 is the obvious choice for such a computer. And it would also fit nicely, very small and compact. PC builds with, well, very low power usage. I still would wish that this graphics card would not be called 3050 because it's 25% slower than the original 3050. Nvidia could have called it like 3040 and that would make so much more sense. Still, it's an interesting product, though a somewhat niche product, but I think we already know who its potential customers are. Though, it could have been a little more cheaper. Let's say $150 instead of $170. 
that would definitely make it better. But we'll see. Maybe Nvidia drops the price a little bit. Or maybe AMD will drop the price on 6500 XT. We'll see. I also look forward to further reviews that would compare this card to ARC. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and thumbs up if you like the video.